It's homecoming week. And you know what that means. That's right. It's only late September. Which ultimately means that Casey Kasem's visit, Lisa's credit card debt, Screech's powers, Jesse's bugged slumber party, Zach's cross-dressing, Slater's luau, and the seduction of our women all happened in the first four or five weeks of ninth grade. Homecoming week also means that it's time for Bayside's yearly football game against Valley High School. We haven't beaten Valley in 22 years. 23, but who's counting? You are! Jessie wants to beat Valley, but she's a little more concerned about pushing her lame tiger tail merchandise. Got an idea? You attach the hat to the tails, attach the hat to our star quarterback here, well, you have a stroke of marketing genius. Well, wait a minute. I look stupid in this. Ain't no problem. We'll just cover the stupid part. Roasted! And what's it called when there's a mullet in front and back? Double roasted! Jessie nearly breaks when Kelly asks how she looks. Kelly's a little obsessed these days since she's running for homecoming queen as a ninth grader. Needless to say, she doesn't want any of her minor flaws getting out. Cue Lisa! How is anyone going to find out you wear a retainer? Want to join our retainer club? <laughs> Nerd! Speaking of nerds, gosh dang it, Screech just can't help it. He's got his first zit and he's named it Murray. Well, I hope Murray and you are very happy together. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the taping, Dad. Speaking of Dustin Diamond's dad, here he is again as the science teacher, Mr. Bennett, who just watches as Screech mixes volatile chemicals. You may have been a good dad, but you made an awful science teacher. And the scene's over. Now we've got three things to note here in the Max. First, Kelly is convinced that Homecoming Queen is all about looks. Second, it's nice to see that the writers didn't feel the need to have Kelly, Susie, and Muffin being petty towards each other as Homecoming Queen rivals. Yeah, I wouldn't give those two Bow Wows a second look. <laughs> Though the writers certainly could have. Third, Kelly drinks both malts which might play into her problems later in the episode. All right, lunchtime is over. It's been two hours since Screech schlubed on himself, and Murray the Pimple is gone. What? Did we just cure faces? Yup! Screech whips up a batch of cream by that afternoon, and he and Zack test it out on Crater Face Coburn, who is unapologetically wearing the tightest pants. He is also unapologetic about stealing his laugh from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> oh no, I, I hate this. All of it, I, I hate this. It's the next day, and we get our first ever glimpse of Kelly's room. Why are we here and not at school? Well, Kelly has a zit on the end of her nose, and she doesn't want to go to school for the homecoming parade, or she'll look like this. Yeah, except she looks like this. I think it's funny that they actually gave Screech a zit, but not Hot Girl Kelly. Don't you guys understand? I mean, I've never won anything before in my life. Uh, then what the F is this? Maybe it's Kelly that doesn't understand what winning is. Winning is super important to Kelly, as she wants the spotlight in a family of seven kids. Also, her mom was homecoming queen, so there's some added healthy pressure. Zack exhibits his Time Lord abilities by printing a custom poster, mass producing the zit cream, and obtaining packaging all overnight. Zack uses his best buddy Screech and tight pants crater face Colburn for a demonstration, and people go nuts. Belding, however, is a wet blanket. Zach gets detention for selling wares at school. Of course, the school received half of the proceeds. No sale. But we'd even name it after you. We'd call it... Bell the Sill. I've heard worse names. And is it just me, or did the sound engineer get the timing on this effect wrong? Bell the Sill. 
Somebody needs to explain to me how Craterface got his name. Everyone is so wowed by his smooth complexion. Doesn't Craterface imply that he has acne pockmarks and scars? Did the acne cream make those go away too? Maybe Beldasil is even better than advertised. Kelly seems to think so, as she schmoozes Zack for a tube. For a friend. But Rose, Zacky! The cream has a side effect that turns your face maroon. How's it gonna get out of this pickle, folks? Ah, by hiding the evidence. Later that night, things are looking pretty bleak. Until Screech takes off his mask. I'm whole again! <laughs> this is great! So here's the timeline. Cream goes on and kills Zitz in two hours. The application sites turn maroon in 24 hours. The maroon goes away after a few hours. Zack may get out of this after all. Except that Kelly just got her cream and the homecoming coronation is the next day. <laughs> Zack decides to come clean to Kelly and she is pissed. And with good reason. He tries to shame her about obsessing about her looks. But I think anyone can win an argument with this as the tagline. Zack, you've turned my face maroon. It's also tough to win an argument when you flub the line. Look, you're the prettiest girl in school. The what now? Look, you're the prettiest girl in school. Yeah, that type of talk will get anyone kicked out of a hot girl's room. And speaking of Callie's room, can we discuss its layout for a minute? Earlier in the episode, we are led to believe that Kelly is hiding in a closet or bathroom over here. But later, Zack enters from over here, which is clearly a hallway that would run into the closet bathroom thing. This don't make no sense. Something tells me this wasn't shot in a real house. It's the next day. I feel compelled to remind you that Slater is in the ninth grade which makes his status as the team's captain really impressive. Or really pathetic. I mean, they have lost to Valley 22 straight years. 23, but who's counting? You are! And let's all take a moment to appreciate Max dropping a ball to start this scene. It's time to announce your homecoming queen! Now... I'm sure you were pretty annoyed when I just skipped over the fact earlier that one of the nominees was named Muffin. But I kind of had to wait for this scene. Second runner-up is... Muffin Sangria! Because her name isn't just Muffin, it's Muffin Sangria. Which is what the writers had to be buzzed on to pen that name. It's not alcoholic? Oh, that's just bad writing then. And first runner-up? Susie Van Fike! Okay, this one makes more sense, as Susie Van Fike was likely named after the assistant to the executive producer, Sue Fike, who had been working on the show since the Good Morning Miss Bliss days. But who's the winner? And now for our homecoming queen, the girl who has school spirit written all over her face, Kelly Kapowski! <laughs> Man, Susie and Muffin have to be so pissed. The gimmick is that nearly everyone, yes, everyone, used the cream, so Kelly wasn't so freakish after all. My big question is how the producers let Kelly win while matching that orange dress with her maroon face. Susie and Muffin have to be so pissed. Wait, did we just see Craterface Coburn sitting next to Zack? His face is all red. There are three explanations for this. One, he's using the face paint Zack brought for some of the students. Two, his acne problem is so bad that he had to reapply Beldasil. Or three, the producers forgot that his skin should be normal by now. Now as to the homecoming football game, Zack recaps it for us. Apparently the red Bayside faces intimidated Valley, and they fumbled the ball on the opening kickoff. Slater then scores the only touchdown of the game. Thanks for telling us the result before it even happened, Zach. Time Lords be Time Lording. But no Time Lordery is going to explain why the end zone in this clip is clear, while this clip has markings in its end zone. 
And if this is the opening kickoff, why is it an onside kick in the opponent's side of the field? And why is Bayside rocking dark helmets here, but white helmets there? And why is Valley rocking black pants here, but gray pants there? And it's a bit blurry, but does this long name really say Slater? Maybe I just don't understand football. Scott Fultz played Charlie Craterface Coburn. I think I've been calling him Colburn? Anyway, there isn't much to his on-screen resume, as most of his career has been in the classroom teaching acting. His biggest television role was as Julian in Ow She Wolf of London. He also had spots in Beverly Hills 90210, Highway to Heaven, and Tales from the Crypt. He also played Buddy Holly in an episode of Quantum Leap. The gag was that the song Peggy Sue first began as a riff on Here Piggy Piggy Sue. And that kind of hurt to say. Piggy, my Piggy Sue 